time travel is an aspect of many pieces of media. It can be easy to implement, but if done incorrectly, it can lead to a story that makes no sense. This movie takes a unique approach to not only that, but the style and pace as well. A Girl Who Leapt Through Time is a 2006 film directed by Mamoru Sodo, produced by Madhouse, and written by Seto Okudera. Makoto is your average tomboy who enjoys life and has it going in a steady pace, until one day when she's forced to help out after school, Makoto falls over and on what seems to be a walnut? One out-of-body experience later, she avoids a near-death experience as she learns that by propelling herself into the air, Makoto can in fact rewind time. Learning of this new power, she does what anyone else would do, abuse it in order to fulfil your own life. However, Makoto soon learns that her power may also have negative consequences. As a time travel story, I found the girl who leapt through time to be pretty good. Instead of going back 30 or more years, we stay in the present. Even though the film is around an hour and 40 minutes, its plot is paced reasonably well as there's never usually a dull moment. It has a nice variety between calm and intense moments. The plot seems more of a means of getting certain reactions out of the characters as it revolves around them and not the other way around. The plot sets up everything, and the characters take it from then on and decide on where the story goes. My only major gripe is the whole means of time travel in this movie. It seems a bit forced, in my opinion. When someone has the walnut time machine thing, is it really explained, placed on their skin, it reveals a number dictating how many leaps they have left. Okay, that doesn't seem very effective, as you have no way of getting back to the future you came from. It has more of a personal use than to benefit scientists or historians, which kind of begs the question of why it was ever made. Also, on top of leaping as a means of travelling, its only purpose for leaping seems to be for the sake of the title, or in order for some tense running scenes, which I admit did create for one amazing part towards the end of the film. But at least they tried to come up with a new concept instead of the usual time machine gizmo. And I think that it deserves credit, as the distance left and the time reversed do have some sort of correlation, so at least it was thought through. Overall, this is a minor complaint that really only came to me when I thought of the movie afterwards, and never occurred when I was watching it. The plot is simple yet effective. I was captivated the whole time I was watching, and all the events and interactions are necessary. There are some unexplained aspects, but you just have to fill them in for yourself. Characters are definitely what drive this movie forward, as without them, it would go nowhere. Makoto Kono is an eager and energetic 17-year-old girl who drives the story along. She is prevalent in most scenes. She can appear to be selfish at first, only using the time loops for her own advantage, but as the story continues, she develops, turning her into a more likeable character. I would say that she's enjoyable for the most part. I would be lying if I said that her loud nature didn't sometimes get on my nerves. But Makoto is a character that experiences many different emotions, and she is believable for most of the experience. Oh, should I go back in time? Then again, it's not like anything's happened yet. Another character that comes to mind would be Chiaki, a friend of Makoto's. He is pretty relaxed and enjoys spending his time with both Makoto and Kosuke. He appears basic at first, but gets a bit more development towards the latter half, and plays a much larger role. I'll keep it at that because I don't want to spoil anything, but my only problem is that I wanted to learn more about him towards the end, but it never goes into a whole lot of detail. I can't throw good when I'm thinking. It's no use. I just don't get it! Most of the characters are pretty basic. They have varying personalities and basic roles. They did what they had to, and were all mostly likeable due to their kind nature. With the one exception being Makoto's aunt, who was nice, but accepted the whole timely thing in a flash. I don't know if she was doing this as she didn't want to ask questions, or if she was subtly taking the piss, but I couldn't help but notice this. Animation was pretty good for the most part. The guy who did the character designs for Evangelion also did the same here, I think all the character designs are unique and represent the personality of the said character pretty well. The animation was also really fluid and was stand out during the scenes when Makoto experiences the time leap. 
It's a bizarre and inventive use of colour and motion. The backgrounds were also very detailed. The only problem I found was that, up close, the characters were clear, like you would expect. But if they were positioned at a certain distance from the frame, then the models would just deteriorate to such a basic look that it became a bit jarring. The soundtrack was good for the most part. It was done by Hiyoshi Yoshida and consisted mostly of piano and a few wind instruments. It helped create the relaxed mood of the small town and were joyous in tone. Mostly, they did tend to be quite forgettable, though, as the slower and more emotional pieces were a lot more memorable in my opinion, mainly due to the change in tone and the good use of implementation. I thought that the dub was pretty good as well. Emily Hurst was energetic and varied with Makoto, with this being her only work that I could find, so for a supposed first time, I think she did great. Andrew Francis played Chiaki respectively, adding a relaxed tone with a lot of abbreviation, as many tough guys in dubs don't tend to do. It's a good dub with appropriate casting, so I definitely recommend it. Overall, The Girl Who Leapt Through Time is an enjoyable time. Beforehand, I thought it was just going to be another light-hearted, whimsical anime movie that any popular western reviews praise in order to look diverse. But I was surprised, as even though it appears to be average from the outside, with good use of pacing, necessary character interactions, and unexpected plot twists, it deserves all of its praise. Even if it does have some unexplained occurrences, apart from said occurrences and the sometimes dull pacing, I would definitely recommend this movie if you wanted a different kind of time travel film. I give The Girl Who Leapt Through Time an 8.5 out of 10.